Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. The FOMC minutes came out this week and are certainly showing that the Fed was not bluffing. So although we have a little shorter week this week in, in markets and trading, uh, still quite a bit to cover. My name is Brandon Steele, financial advisor with Mainsail Financial Group here in Bellevue. And our goal every Thursday is to bring to you the market news, data, trends that we're watching, and hopefully weed out a bit of the noise along the way. Uh, this is also our first session back since our uh, webinar there last week. So we will be back to our question of the week, which is a really good one about how interest rates kind of impact bond prices. <clears throat> Before we get to that, of course, I want to spend some time on the market news this week. So um, basically ahead of the, the, the biggest thing was the FOMC minutes that came out yesterday on Wednesday. And ahead of the minutes on Wednesday, we saw the futures market really um, speculating for kind of a follow-up uh, along the lines of a softer Fed. I think that the markets, the futures market was showing that the market was, was going to increase. Uh, in fact, I think the market was up pretty big at the get-go get yesterday on Wednesday and kind of petered off as the day went on. So basically, heading into this FOMC minute release, it seems that the, the, the market was really pricing in, yet again, a softer tone from the Fed and from the minutes that came out. Now, fast forward to, I think it was like 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time that the minutes came out yesterday. And the gist of it is that the minutes show very clearly that the Fed was not lying or not bluffing uh, when they were sharing their plans to keep hiking. So I think what happened with the Fed meeting their press conference a couple of weeks back was that there was a lot of speculation around the tone of how the questions were answered and not a lot of conviction around, you know, the the needing to get this under control side of the equation here. And it's very clear in the minutes that 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 may not be the case, right? When it's in words and black and white, uh, it may stand out a little bit more. So the minutes have been, we're very clear that that they still feel that the inflation issue is still an issue. Um, and especially with the data since the Fed meeting, um, you know, it actually suggests, it certainly suggests more hikes to come. In fact, many of the central bankers were even um, reporting a 50 basis point hike in the next meeting, which I believe is March 20th or something along those lines, towards the end of March. So I, I don't, personally, I don't think that they will do a 50 basis point hike come, come the end of March because they have not communicated that. And again, I think they're very concerned about it. Clearly, based on the Fed's press conference a couple of weeks ago, they, you know, they were scared to spook the market, I think, even then. So um, it's interesting. We hear a lot of people now in the media and, and out there talking about a 50 basis point hike when just, what, two weeks ago, everybody was saying that the Fed's going to stop, basically. So there's a lot of speculation still around the Fed. Even the day of the minutes, we saw the market kind of open up higher with expectations the minutes were going to come in soft. And, uh, you know, clearly that that didn't pan out as the day went on there. So really important to watch. Um, we also had initial jobless claims numbers come out today down again. So down to 192,000 for the initial jobless claims number today on Thursday. Um, and, you know, right after the Fed minutes yesterday. So market is is back to worrying about the Fed a little bit. Um, neither day were, were giant drops necessarily. Um, but but it's very clear that the market is getting concerned again that the Fed, you know, the Fed's path will continue, uh, which, you know, I think we've shared a few times, but, but we believe that that will be the case as well. And inflation is going to be here, um, you know, for a little bit. So interesting to see that. The last thing I'll touch on before we get to our question of the week is we also had the first GDP revision come out today and down slightly from the original print. So 2.7% uh, GDP number right now. And obviously there's some more revisions that may come as well. Coming up next week, we have um, another big week, unfortunately, fortunately, however you want to look at a Fed talk. Uh, we've got a lot of Fed uh, central bankers just kind of talking about their opinions tomorrow. So that'll be interesting to hear some, some perspective. Uh, we also have consumer spending and PCE index, or in other words, another measurement of inflation to watch. So a lot coming up next week. Definitely tune in next Thursday at three for some of those updates. Ahead of that, we had a great question of the week here this week, which actually came from a conversation I had um, with somebody named BG. And so basically the question is, well, how do interest rates impact bond prices? And for those who, uh, who do kind of follow us closely, you've probably heard me talk about this before, but it's a really good time to refresh on this because 
obviously the Fed is in the focus. Interest rates are the result of that focus. And with that, bond prices are along for the ride. So basically, a, a bond works as an instrument of debt, right? You might loan an entity, a government uh, company, a thousand dollars, and let's. I'm going to really simplify this, but let's say for that thousand dollars, they say, okay, we'll give you four percent every year. Uh, and at the end of 10 years, you get your $1,000 back, right? That is the return that you get for making that loan to that entity, whatever it might be. Now, if that's paying 4%, that all sounds well and great, right? We know we can kind of rely on that. Obviously, the strength of the company or entity issuing it uh, is something you need to consider. But just generally speaking, it provides some predictability. Now, what happens if all of a sudden, a year later, uh, interest rates are now, let's say, at 6%. That same entity issues the same bond, thousand in, thousand out after 10 years, but every year along the way, they're now giving 6%, right? How do you feel holding the old version of the machine, the 4% version? Probably not so great, right? So if you were to go try and sell the 4% version of this bond, do you think you would get more or less for that particular machine? Right. It's kind of like when uh, all these uh, Nintendos and all of these consoles, when they upgrade, uh, as soon as the next one comes out, you kind of feel like you've got last year's last year's goods. The same can apply with with bonds when interest rates are rising, because now the question is, well, there's something bigger, faster, stronger out there. And if I wanted to sell my slower machine, I'm probably not going to get quite as much for it as the the updated version. Now, the same can work the other way around. So as interest rates decrease, right, if now there's a 2% machine out there, you actually might get more for your 4% version, knowing that that is the best uh, the best rate out there, so to speak, right? Obviously, that, that's a very general uh, thought or concept, but you get the idea. So the reason this is so important is because interest rates have been all over the place. If we go back to late 2021, the writing was on the wall that the Fed was going to start raising rates for sure. And that's exactly what happened. In fact, rates were at, at zero, right? I mean, there's really no, well, technically nowhere to go, but but they they could go negative. So when rates rise, what happened is the bond prices fell. You go back to last year, bond markets got hit pretty hard. Um, a way to handle that is possibly to shorten duration. There's all kinds of ways to be more strategic with this. But generally speaking, when interest rates rise, bond prices fall. Now, here we are, you know, uh, end of February 2023, and markets have been doing a lot of this. I mean, the interest rate has dropped, come right back up. And so the question is, where does it go from here? Again, I think that the Fed still has some work to do. But but remember that the bond market is, is speculating on future hikes. So it's not always going to follow exactly what the Fed does. So it's really important to pay attention to this. Um, it's exciting to see that bonds are now paying a little bit more interest. But, you know, keep in mind that bond prices are also going to fluctuate depending on how interest rates move in the, the course of that time, too. So I hope that was helpful. A uh, really good conversation that I had the other day on this. And so I figured it would be good to just kind of bring it to, to everybody here today as well. Have a great upcoming weekend. We will break down all of the Fed speak uh, next week here that, that comes out tomorrow, as well as some of the inflation and consumer spending data. In the meantime, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Thursday at 3.